I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today we're going to do part three of our series on technology for expats and digital nomads and tourists who are like extreme and on the road all the time. And today we're going to be talking about not streaming services, but we're going to talk about the technology for having your own media available with you at all times, whether you're living at home or or you're traveling all the time and you just have a small, but we're just going to cover the basis, right, of how you can have your, your movies and TV shows and different things that you want to bring with you and make them ultimately available in the best possible way. So we're going to get to all that right after the bump. When you're living at home and you have all the resources that you're used to at home, you could do any number of things. I'm from the generation where we used to own Laserdiscs and then we owned DVDs and then we owned Blu-rays and then we were upset because we owned Blu-rays and then everything was streaming. It was just, it was frustrating, right? But you've gone through these, these eras and a lot of us own a lot of media. A lot of the things that we want to be able to watch on a regular basis, we own in some way or we could own in some way if we decided that that's what we were going to do. Well, we're going to talk about how you can address some of that as a tourist. Of course, this stuff applies to when you're not a tourist as well, but how it matters as far as relevance could be a little bit different. So there's two key pieces of technology that we're going to talk about today, and they cover two different bases. One is called Cody, and one is called Jellyfin. Now there's alternatives to both of these, but these two, from what I've seen and what I've experienced, stand out as being by far the most interesting and the best for most people. They're also both free and probably the best in, in as far as what they do. So they're really interesting because anybody can go out and start playing with these today and uh, see if it's something that you're interested in. So let's get right to it. So first, let's start with what do these products do? Well, one is a client, and that could mean anything. So in the modern world, you're probably, and stop me if you don't know about this, but you're probably used to smart TVs, Roku's, Apple TV, uh, Amazon Fire Sticks and so forth, right? There's a number of these kinds of products and Android TV is another, WebOS with LG is another. Lots of different things work this way. And what it is is either built into your TV or a separate device that you plug into the TV normally through HDMI uh, allows you to basically have a computer attached to, t to your TV and it allows you to connect to streaming services. Often it allows you to copy some of your own videos on there and watch them, so on and so forth. They're often pretty limited, but they're also not very expensive devices, uh, but they can be really beneficial. There was a time where TVs were never smart, and anytime you wanted to have a computer monitor or a television that showed stuff like, say, Netflix or Hulu, you couldn't do that with just a TV. You had to connect something to it. And at first, we were connecting com complete computers to it. Then we started connecting small computers to it. Then we started connecting laptops to it. And eventually they said, and this all happened pretty fast, we need devices that are custom made for this. And they started making small devices with HDMI output and had a remote control that you could plug right into your TV and your personal streaming experience would come with you. Roku was one of the leaders in this. There's lots of options. Personally, I like Roku a lot, but I would use Apple TV if I was going to buy one. They were super popular for a while, and that's why I think most of you are going to be familiar with them. After that era, a lot of the TV makers said, well, this is a super big pain. Every single TV needs one of these. People want this built into their TVs, and that technology became outrageously cheap. So they became normal to build that in and have smart TVs. So the TVs started coming with that entire platform built in. It also gave the TV manufacturers a chance to show some advertising and differentiate themselves a little bit for almost no money. So they would do that and you would no longer need to go get those products as external devices. It was all just built into the TV. And for the most part, this is really nice, but it does have some limitations. When you have TVs in your home or other devices that uh, may not be quite as robust, uh, you have this problem that every one of the TVs has to have its own services. It's got to be set up. Um, when you're uh, moving from from place to place, uh, it could be a problem. Like if you're at home and you want to watch a TV, it knows everything about you. But when you go to a hotel, for example, or your buddy's house and you just want to watch your own Netflix, well, it's their Netflix you're going to be using, or you got to sign into yours on their device. And that causes, there's just a lot of things that get complicated. And it's not bad. It's not like Netflix is causing the problem. It's not like Hulu's causing the problem. It's just, it's a little bit of a logistic challenge given the way that these services work and just having to sign in every place. Like it's, it's, it's a little bit much. So, 
some people still like to have the Fire Sticks, the Rokus, the Apple TVs, and maybe have a portable version and take it with them. And this is especially popular with tourists traditionally because if you're traveling, especially something really small like a Fire Stick or a Roku Stick that you can fit in your pocket, it's really easy to travel with. We always traveled with one of these, uh, even 10 years ago when we were on the road all the time with our kids. We always would have this because even if we were in a hotel room that had all those things or we we're renting a house that had those things, we would be limited in that we could only use the services that their devices supported. But when we had our own Fire Stick or Roku or whatever, we could plug it in and all of our stuff was already signed in. It wasn't like we had to set it up. We just plug it in and instantly it would start working. And any movies that we were in the middle of, we'd still be in the middle of. Everything we had access to, we'd still have access to. Every single thing was on there. And so that was really nice that we could create our own experience and have it all configured for us. And no matter where we went, all you had to do is pop it into the TV and you're good to go. So there's a lot of reasons why, especially for travelers, maintaining those external devices is still popular, even if every hotel room you go into has a smart TV today and you wouldn't technically need it. It's so much work that most people aren't going to sign into Amazon Prime, sign into Netflix, sign into Hulu, just so they can scroll through and see which things they want to watch. If they can't pick it ahead of time, they're gonna give up and say it's just too much work. Also when traveling, there's a very real possibility that you're gonna run into places that have older technology, such as dumb TVs. They may be perfectly modern as far as having HDMI and a good picture, but they don't have the smart features built in. This may be actually ideal because they're the easiest. You just pop the stick in that you have with you and they just work. And I do have one of these that we bought recently. It's a very cheap, very small one, but it's on my desk and it is handy to have something that I can just plug an HDMI cable into and I know that whatever I plug into is going to work. Those who watch my live shows will be familiar with that's what I use as a monitor for the show. It's the handiest thing because it isn't smart, so it turns on really quickly and is super reliable. I actually don't like smart TVs that much. I wish that they would actually wipe that out and we'd have to add our own devices to everything because sometimes that would just be nicer. And then I can make sure I have a really good one because the good ones are really fast and stable and have a lot of features. Some TVs don't let you do things like put VPNs on them. And that can be really limiting if you're a traveler. Whereas if you have your own device, you can pick your device and pick your VPN products based on what works together. And so that can be a big deal as well. Uh, so that's very nice. Now, all that said, this category of products, the smartening of the televisions, the Rokus, the Apple TVs, the Fire Sticks, and so forth, there must be a way to build your own of this type of category. And there is, there's actually a few different ways to build your own, but some of them are super cumbersome, very like I'm doing a DIY project and just whatever. If you want to, on a very simple, very straightforward, easy way, build your own device that you can take with you and have a super powerful, basically the sky is the limit style device, that is where Kodi comes in. Kodi is, uh, first of all, free. Second of all, it runs on most of the things you would want to do something like this for. So basically it runs on like a Windows computer or a Linux computer. And Linux is free, so if you just have something and all you want to do is use Kodi on it, you definitely don't want Windows. It makes zero sense. Literally so much less than zero sense. It is actively, horrifically negative to try to do this on Windows if you don't need the Windows for some other purpose. So of course, a lot of people will be like, well, if I'm gonna do this, let's just have a portable computer and have a full computer with us and the, yeah, sure, that can make sense. And then whatever you need, fine. But for, if you're just doing this for Kodi, you definitely wanna run it on Linux, completely free, very secure, very easy to maintain, makes your life super easy. And all you do is put in like one command line and it builds this entire system. So it's like having your own personal Roku device. But what's nice is it's customizable. And the thing that's really important that I'm talking about today is that you can include in that device, if you want a hard drive that is full of your own media. Now, where this media comes from, that is up to you. And technically it should be stuff that you own, right? Whether it's a DVD that you're copying onto there or something Something you have the right to download or however you have a source of your videos and it's important to note that in every jurisdiction what things are legal or not legal is completely different so just be aware of what's legal where you are before you do whatever or do whatever you want just it's not advice from me unless it's legal and if you are going to um, you know, store this on there. For example, maybe there's a TV show that your kids really like to watch and they just want to have it available all the time. Well, you can load it onto the device and then when you're traveling, if you're in a place and it doesn't have internet access or it does, but it's not very stable or it has all that, but you can't get to your streaming service or you don't have a streaming service that has this and it's only on DVD in your house. All those things are solved. You have a stick or a little tiny computer that you're carrying with you 
I'm not going to go into all the hardware here. If people do have hardware questions, feel free to ask down below. I don't mind answering them. I'm just not going to include it on the long-winded video. Uh, you have this little device with you. It can carry as many things as you want on it. You could put in a, a terabyte, a 10 terabyte hard drive and have thousands upon thousands of movies and shows or whatever, anything you own, right? I own thousands of thousands and thousands of CDs, DVDs, Laserdiscs, all things that I have, Blu-rays, all things that I have at home, those can all be put onto something like this and, and have this huge library. And there's so many sources for that kind of stuff, depending on, again, where you are, what you own, whatever, you can have so much stuff that you take with you and then you don't have to worry about internet access, streaming availability, changing of where services are, getting a, you know, whatever, getting the language that you want, detecting that you're in the wrong place and, and taking things away or things just leaving a service. It's yours to keep. And so you can have that kind of control and have it with you that just whenever you're traveling, just plug it in and you're good to go. Of course, you can also use streaming services through it. You can do all kinds of things. It's very powerful. It's basically giving you a Roku device that is yours, right? Completely customizable, way beyond what Roku or Apple TV or anyone like that does. And this could be a really great tool, especially if you're moving around a lot or if you have dumb devices like older TVs or projectors that you want to use in a very smart, modern way, but they don't have that stuff built in. This takes care of it at very low cost. And importantly, yes, if this is something you're going to do and you're going to do it all the time and it's like a really big deal for you, you probably want to get a, a some kind of computer, which could be a very small stick for $90 or a big honking thing that can do any number of things for $350. That's kind of the range I can't imagine and going beyond that and, and have this device and take it with you. Um, and, and you're going to buy a computer just for that. And you're going to spend a little bit of money, a little bit of a project and have this amazing device that you love. Yes, that could be for you. But also maybe you travel and you always take a laptop and you only want to do this once in a great while, but you don't want to be completely without the functionality. Well, great. You can put this onto a, I believe you can put it on a Raspberry Pi. I know you can put it onto a laptop and get something like that. And then if you want to watch something on that rare occasion where you're like, you know what, we have a night where there's nothing to do, you can plug it into the TV and use it that way. Now, of course, of course, you could do that with a laptop anyway, and then go to Netflix's website and do things you could go to. That's fine. You could also just have a bunch of files on your computer and click on them and watch that way. Fine. But the Cody thing gives you an experience so that you can sit on the, the bed in a hotel room, presumably, and look up on the TV and use a remote that you can put on your phone and very easily have a experience like a smart TV. It's the experience that makes it unique. So also worth noting with Kodi, you can install some video game emulators. So potentially you could load it up with some video games as well and have some things to play while you're on the road. Of course, you'd need to take a joystick with you or something, uh, but that is an option as well, all through the system, which is very flexible. It's worth noting that Apple TV also allows for that, as does Android TV, but they tend to not do it very well. Kodi can do a lot more than those can and potentially you can build a device that's a lot more powerful. So Cody, I think is really interesting. And Douglas Solomon, one of my viewers, uh, uses it and was very excited about um, the possibility of the things that it can do. Uh, and I do think it's worth sharing that uh, if I was going to want a portable device that I was going to do that kind of stuff with, Cody is exactly what I would use. I don't tend to use that myself. At this point, when I'm traveling, I am if I'm actually like just in a hotel room, I tend to give up on watching anything. I do have a laptop. If I absolutely need to watch something, I can do it there. I can watch on my phone. But the number of times I've actually wanted to do that, approaches zero in the last five years. So for me, it's not even worth carrying a Roku stick in my pocket, let alone a, a device that I put together. It all depends on how you travel, where you're going, what you're doing. Do you have a family? Do you have kids who really want to be able to watch things? It's just watching things in the evening, something you want to be able to do. You don't want to be stuck having the feeling of having to go out. You want to be able to stay in it. Like, that's all very personal. If I was going to do that, Cody is the way I would do it, absolutely. And if I had a single device that I wanted to be able to do all my work from, like I live in a house and I have a single TV, I'm not going to move from room to room, and I just want this one TV to have all my stuff, then Cody is definitely how I would do it. I'd put a little computer there, attach it to the TV permanently, I would put a big hard drive in it and have all my stuff that I want downloaded on there, everything that I'm streaming, stream through there, and use that as the control box for absolutely everything that I do. That would be fantastic. I don't do that though, and so next up is Jellyfin, and I'm gonna explain how that gives a completely different experience to accessing your media while traveling or at home. Unlike Kodi, that is a physical device that attaches to your television or monitor or projector, whatever you're gonna watch videos on, Jellyfin acts in a completely different way, even though it fulfills a lot of the same needs. So it's easy to look at these products and say, are these kind of competitors? But they're not. 
well, maybe they are, but they're not competitor products. They're competitor paradigms. With Kodi, you're talking about a single device or a client that attaches directly to your monitor. With Jellyfin, we're not talking about that at all. We're talking about a server that turns your personal media, including potentially streaming services, into a service of your own. This allows you to create your own Netflix, for example, your own private Netflix that is not there to give you the ability to actually compete with streaming services. That's a completely different animal. But to have a personal Netflix-like service that you can use with your own media for your own usage, it does an amazing job. And a lot of people are familiar with Plex, which is a commercial non-free alternative to Jellyfin, but I found that Jellyfin works much better and is free. So that's a pretty good combination of things. And as is often the case, free normally trumps paid products in quality and features. Normally why they make you pay is because they aren't as good and they need to get your money before you realize it. Now all of this may sound a little bit crazy and why would you want a service like this while it sounds kind of neat, is that really practical? And it may not be for you. People for whom having Cody makes a lot of sense may not want Jellyfin. And people for whom Jellyfin is the most obvious, amazing thing ever probably don't want Cody. But we're going to get to where there's a crossover in that Venn diagram in just a little bit. But with Jellyfin, what you're able to do is have a computer somewhere in your house, and generally we would recommend a dedicated server for this, and that does not mean a big scary thing. This can mean a very small box. It can just mean a laptop. It can be any number of things. It can be added absolutely itty bitty tiny if that's what you want to do, but something somewhere in your house, and this doesn't have to be a house house. This could be an apartment that you're renting. It could be uh, in the hotel you're staying in. It could be any number of things. You can be flexible with this, right? But it typically is not going to make sense if you are going out and staying in a uh, hotel room and you're just plugging into the TV, you just you want something simpler. But there are situations where that can make sense too. I'll try to cover some of that. But what does this thing do? So what does Jellyfin do? So like Cody, which allowed you to plug into a TV and have a, a device that's full of all of your media and display it to you on the screen, Jellyfin works slightly differently. It takes all your media, again, just like Cody, but puts it onto a central device that goes onto your network. So this talks over your Wi-Fi, or you can plug it in even better if you have the opportunity to do that. Like here in our house, we have wires going everywhere, so we plug that in, you get better results that way, but Wi-Fi works fine. Those of you who are on Wi-Fi, you're already on Wi-Fi. Right? And then onto the Wi-Fi, it streams all of your media. Instead of having Kodi, which has it connected directly to a TV, this is on the network. So when you sit down at a smart TV, you sit down at a computer, you go to your iPhone, any device like that, you can just go to Jellyfin, either a web page or you can have an app, a Jellyfin app that connects to it. And suddenly all of your movies, TV shows, your vlogs that you download, anything that you have, your own media, like if you're you're out making family movies with your phone, you're, you've got a GoPro, all that stuff can be stored on the Jellyfin server before you edit it, after you edit it, doesn't matter. And it will stream it out to your house. So it's like you can build your own personal streaming service of whatever you want, things that you shoot, things that you buy, whatever. And so that is a very different thing that takes a little bit for people to understand typically because it's so novel that you could have a service like Netflix. You go to a web page or an app and suddenly every single thing you have ever owned is available all right there. And it does a great job, Cody does too, of pulling down information like getting the cover art from different devices, of getting information about uh, descriptions of the of the movie or tv show listing actors connecting one show to another having runtime ratings all that kind of information all built in so you just like an advanced netflix and way better than netflix actually because it's extremely fast it's on your own network you're not waiting for the internet it is much more robust it's full of more information netflix gives you almost nothing no way to search on things usefully no way to like link things together and all of that is fixed with jellyfin you get a way better browsing experience at much higher speed. And of course, you only have things on there that presumably you would reasonably be interested in. When I go to Netflix, 90% or more of what's on there, I would never watch ever. Maybe your mileage isn't quite the same. There's a bunch of kids across the street. But if in general, you're not going to want to watch that much stuff. You spend all your time wading through things you would never want to see. With Jellyfin, you're only gonna wade through the things that you took the time to purchase or obtain in some way. And so it's a much more limited service that is very high density of usability for you. And you can get obscure things or whatever. You don't have to worry about service taking them away over time, but it's available everywhere in your 
house, for example. So, for example, here in our house, every room has a TV. And even the rooms that don't have TVs, which doesn't make any sense, I said they all do, we have several TVs, including the living room, the video game room, my bedroom. But some rooms don't have TVs, such as uh, my office. In my office, I can just go to my computer, go to the web page, and get Jellyfin that way, and use it just like I would the Netflix website. And if I'm on my phone, I'm able to go to the Jellyfin app, open it up, and right away start watching movies. And I love doing this. Go watch some old movies or whatever, because I enjoy old movies. I can be watching them in the living room for a little while, and then be like, I don't have time for this. And then later be in bed, just bring up my phone, and it picks up right where I was. And of course, you can do this with Netflix most of the time, but that stuff doesn't work nearly as well. I've never had an experience where that didn't oh, take so long to buffer and, and maybe the internet's not working great maybe I just whatever I find it to much be much be much less enjoyable with Jellyfin it's so fast and so efficient and you don't have to worry about buffering under normal circumstances because it can read the movies and display them out to the devices so fast that you don't have those same kind of problems that you have where your internet connection might not be fast enough, where your internet connection might have gone down. What if the internet is gone completely? Well, this will just keep working inside your house. You can keep watching, and it's not just one person. Every single room in the house can be on a phone, on a laptop, on a TV, whatever you have, all connected at the same time, watching videos streaming off of your own server. And so that's really powerful but it does take a little bit of work to set up, but it's very easy to obtain, again, free, and you can run it on anything. So yes, if you're really gonna do this, you probably wanna do something like either get a Raspberry Pi and attach a drive to it, or go get something like a Synology NAS box, which is a little bit bigger, and you can put big hard drives into it. That's what we're planning on doing. We've always done that, something like that traditionally in the past, and for us, we have so many people in the house, it just makes sense to do it that way, make it a little bit more robust, but those things will just run Jellyfin, and if that's too much, if you're like, well, this is neat, or I want to test it out, but I don't want to make that kind of commitment, or I don't want to buy something for it, or I'm just not going to use it that often, but the idea is cool, then just use a laptop. And if you're like, well, okay, my laptop works, it'll do it, because any laptop will do this. It takes very little power. You may be like, well, but I want to store a bunch of stuff. That's not going to fit on my laptop. Great. Get an external hard drive, plug that into your laptop, keep all of it there. And anytime you're gonna run Jellyfin, oh, just make sure that that hard drive is attached and you're good to go. And if you're gonna travel and you don't wanna take that stuff with you, just detach it and leave it at home. Now, there's a lot of ways to do this. It's such a lightweight program and it's so easy and free to install anywhere. The chances are, and just get in the comments and ask me, well, here's my scenario, where could I put it? Uh, chances are you either have a place you could put it today or obtaining something that would work for you would be very easy. It's only when you wanna store a ridiculous amount of stuff or you wanna be able to service tons of people that you start to need to get a little bit bigger. It's always pretty easy. I found this service to be really fun to use. For us, it's been a great way to explore all the stuff that we already have, right? I own easily in excess of 5,000 movies, DVD, a lot of them are TV shows, but all on DVD and, and Laserdisc and Blu-ray, I had such a massive collection over the years, and music too, and to be able to see that in, a, in an easy to use way that I can just browse right through. We've had things like this in the past, they were always very hard to use, uh, just because it was, it was cumbersome to sort through, they were too slow. This creates a database that's super fast and you can browse it rapidly from anywhere and, and find the, it, it like correlate information. It's just fantastic how well it works. Um, I was really blown away. I had been using Plex because a friend of mine has Plex, so I use, I'm able to watch his, we'll talk about that in a second. And that got me thinking, boy, this is a kind of thing that'd be useful, but I really don't like using Plex. I Every so often I've fired up Plex, and sometimes when I'm uh, editing the show, I'll actually put the show onto a Plex server, and then I can go somewhere in the house and watch it and sit at a TV and be like, oh, what do I think of this episode or whatever. I do find it useful, but Plex is such a pain to use. It spends all of its time trying to lock you in and sell you things that it really isn't that good of a product and it's not free for a lot of the things you want to do and they're just always nagging you and advertising. It's not the best, but it works okay. But the idea was there and so I looked into it a little bit and discovered Jellyfin was really the upgrade to, the upgrade to Plex that's not just cheaper but vastly better and works so much better and so much easier to install. So I gave it a try and instantly is the best thing in this vein I have ever used. It is so solid, works so well, and the install was seconds. Just one line, copy, paste, hit enter, Wait a few seconds and you had a fully working Jellyfin server and all you have to do is log into the web page that it creates from anywhere in your house and do whatever configuration you want to do. And you can make users on it, which are like Netflix profiles, but not quite. They're full users with the potential for passwords. So people aren't going to just mess with each other, messing up their, their um, you know, 
preferences within the app and you can have every member of your family, any guests that are coming over, you can make as many profiles as you want. You have a hundred people who come through your house from time to time, you know, visitors who come to visit you when you live in Nicaragua or someplace like this. Getting visitors is a very normal thing. You could easily have house guests that come once a year and hang out and maybe they want to watch movies while they're in your guest room, right? They're staying for a week, they want to, but they're working their way through a TV show or something. Well, they can have their own account. There's no reason for them not to have their own. It's free. Have as many as you want. They can log in and save their progress and their history or whatever, their preferences for themselves. And everybody can. So that's really fantastic. We have people who stay here regularly. So we already gave them all their own accounts. And they're like, this is great. They just sign in and they can have an app on their phone. So if they're in a room without a TV, they can just watch on their phone or on a, on a laptop. Or if they're in the, the living room, I can just sign in as, in as themselves and it's their progress. They're in the middle of the movie they can move between. It's so handy. I, I, it's actually shocking to me how good this is and I'm amazed that fewer people are talking about it. So I've just been very happy with this. And then I did promise that we could put this together and that is that you can use Cody and Jellyfin together. Now, I don't know how many people would want to do this, but you certainly can. And the way that it works is Jellyfin is consumed by some kind of app or its own web page. So if you're just going to go to the web page, literally it's just opening a web page like the Netflix.com page, and there you go, and you just watch whatever movie you want. But if you're going to watch it on a TV or on a phone or whatever, you're going to have the Jellyfin app. And this is nice because it makes it very easy to do things, and it's free again, um, and that's the way you're going to watch it. But if you don't have a smart TV, you're going to say, well, how do I use Jellyfin? And that's where Kodi comes in, in the context of Jellyfin. You can install Kodi on a device, attach it to a TV. Of course, you could just attach a laptop to the TV and use the web page. But if you want to sit and have a remote control, that's not the way to go. So you need some way to have that remote, some way to have that nice living room experience on a TV. That's what Kodi is for. So Kodi has a couple different plugins that will allow you to use the gel. Those are my dogs going crazy beside me. They'll allow you to use the Jellyfin uh, system through Kodi. And so it can be just another streaming service inside of Kodi. And you can even mix them together. If your Kodi system has a few movies that you want to take with you when you're on the road, but your Jellyfin is all the stuff you stream in your house and you have that you can merge the two and have this like really hybrid system and do whatever you want. So I don't think very many people are actually going to want to do that as neat as it does sound. As I'm saying it, it's probably not what you're looking for, but it could be. Uh, but you also have Jellyfin apps for, for just about everything you're going to find today and can do things that way. So really, you have unlimited flexibility uh, in all of this. Now, all of that said, with Plex, I did mention that my buddy with Plex, I use his Plex system sometimes. And you may be saying, now, wait a minute, how does that work? Is your buddy hanging out in your house? Is he bringing his Plex system with him? No, his Plex system is online somewhere in the United States and... He provides uh, an IP address for that. You can sign into it and I can watch shows from it remotely. But it has all the problems that Netflix does, that it's slow, it needs to buffer. Those are my dogs crashing into me. Um, it needs to uh, have a really good fast internet connection. And if things get bad at all, like the quality drops and you get the buffering and you gotta wait, it has all those problems. And some days it's just not working. And of course, if he's not around and it stops working, you can't watch anything that's on it. So it's nice and it's really cool. And it gave me this great idea but fundamentally it's watching someone else's isn't that great most of the time. So I took that idea and brought it home. But if you had a Jellyfin server or a Plex server in your house, what you're able to do is if you know what you're doing and you want to do this, you can open it up to the world and either by just exposing it to the internet or you can use a VPN from whatever you're bringing to go back to your house and connect them together. And you can watch that while you're on the road. So this is an alternative and you may want to use Kodi, but not necessarily. If you have, so a lot of people, when we're talking about VPNs, especially in the context of travelers, you're thinking about a, an IP hiding VPN where it connects to some service somewhere and it looks like you're in a different city. It makes you show up as you're in London and then you can watch all the things that are available on Netflix in the UK. That's not what we're talking about. That is a VPN, but it's a very specific non-standard usage of a VPN. A VPN itself is just a tunnel from one place to another. If you have, again, free, a tunnel from your house to say your laptop or a Kodi box or it could be a Roku box, whatever, and you have this tunnel and you're out on the road, you could be in a hotel, you could be, let's just say you're here in Nicaragua, let's say you're in Matagalpa, but your house is here in Leon, you have Jellyfin running in your house. Everyone in your house is watching Jellyfin just like normal, even though you're not there. They're going ahead and watching TV shows without you. You're angry, but whatever. You can be in Matagalpa and hook up your, we'll say Cody device, but it could be anything, it could be a laptop, and hook that up to the internet 
have its VPN turn on, and again, remember, this could be an iPad or a laptop. It does not have to be some special device attached to a TV. Any device you have will work for this. Create a VPN between where you are and your house, and it'll see the Jellyfin server, and you're able to stream from your house, assuming you have fast enough internet, stream yourself, those movies, TV shows, your GoPro footage, whatever you wanna have, to wherever you are, just like you're in the house. And Jellyfin has, this is a cool feature, I have not tried it, honestly, because it's not the kind of thing I would use because we're in the house. But if you're doing this remote thing or you're in multiple rooms, there is a way to do group viewing and it locks a bunch of people's viewing experience together. You can't use it to like sync sound, but all the shows are within a couple seconds of each other and you're able to watch together as a group. So if you're on like a group chat or something, you could have friends in a couple different locations looking at the same Jellyfin server be signed in separately, have yourselves grouped into a group, and you could discuss or you know talk about whatever you're watching together, or at least know that you're watching it all in real time together, just like people used to do with TV shows. When I was a kid and an episode of Who's the Boss came on, I knew the next morning when I got to school that half the kids at school would have watched Who's the Boss, and we could discuss what happened on the episode the night before. Same kind of thing can happen with Jellyfin, that you can be like, okay, here's the thing we're watching, you all watch it together, and you all know where you are along the path path uh, within a very small amount of time. So you're able to have conversations. You're able to talk about it without spoiling things for other people. You know, when it's, it's just shared experience. So that's pretty cool that it's built in. I don't know how many people are going to do that, but it's there specifically for when you're watching in multiple locations like this. So it's a really neat system that gives you a lot of power and maybe combining it with Cody turns into the ultimate situation where you have just flexibility to do anything you want at any time. So I'm very, very happy with this. We only implemented it here about two weeks ago and in using it, what we found is very quickly, we started using it more and more than anything else, um, especially as we learned how it worked, got it set up on all the TVs, made everyone accounts. Yeah, it took a little bit because we had to do a little bit more work. With Netflix, you get one sign in and like five profiles and the profiles don't have passwords. So you just make these profiles and just try to remember to use yours and kind of like it's weird and you do have some control so if you had like some people can see some things and some people can't you can do all that with your jellyfin if you have some things that you own and you can watch them in your house but you can't really let other people watch them you want to lock that down you can so you can have oh all my gopro footage is available to the world i'm just making my own and if you want to make a public channel for your your own gopro footage or you know your own show whatever your your kids decided they want to make a, their own sitcom at home and they put it on a jellyfin server you could open it up publicly to the world i don't recommend that that seems like a really foolish idea there's way better ways to do that for not very much money if that's really what you want to do but but you could it would be an interesting experiment and you could do it off the same jellyfin server that has things you can't share and you can lock that to just your house just certain accounts whatever it is you need to do. So it's a very powerful system. Um, and, and there's other things you can stream through it, like IPTV and a few things like that. It's somewhat limited, but it, it's not bad. And a lot of those things are things I wouldn't do, but it's possible that if you're in a house, you may want to have this kind of central mechanism for getting everything through a, a single uh, point of control. And it, it gives you that. So um, I think for most people who are expats, who are living in a place, Jellyfin is incredibly interesting and almost everyone I've talked to is like, wait, this is fantastic. I really want to do this. And uh, for people who, who travel, so not expats so much, but more digital nomads or just very, uh, very um, active tourists, are much more likely to think that something like Cody is gonna meet their needs uh, far better. And then a very small segment of you could easily have both. So I hope that this is informational. I will put links down below for those products. Be sure to go check them out. Remember, they're free. Just go play around with it and ask any questions in the thread, of course. And as always, like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. I really appreciate all the support we're getting. We're getting so much support now. It is, it is so fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Makes such a difference. There's also a thank you button on Google. And as always, if you would share on social media and tell someone about the show. I would very much appreciate it. I will see all of you tomorrow. And also, if you could, one of these videos that pops up on the end here, it would mean a lot to me if you just clicked on one. It'd be really good if you watched it and commented and did all the things, but even if you just let it run in the background, that makes a big difference. <laughs>